it doesn't have any peanuts in it. It's actually got some pretty nice cardboard. I think this will probably be the best, but I just cut it right here. Let's just slide it out real quick. There we have a little Mac Mini, and we'll take it out here real quick. Here is the actual product. It's got a, a lot of like cellophane wrapped around it. Here's what else was in the box: the cable, obviously, and as I mentioned this is just an instruction manual. And that's what it looks like is the instruction manual. Oh, and some Apple stickers. And that's basically about it. So the packaging looks like it's pretty nicely packaged. I thought now would be a good time to show the system specs. You can see it's a 2.6 gigahertz CPU. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM and the one terabyte hard drive. But let me actually take off this plastic really quick. And there we have the actual product. Get it from all different angles. You can see the inputs and outputs. Kind of a stylish product, to, kind of small. I kind of like the fact that it's really super small. I just wanted to quickly show the screen that you're gonna see when you first start your Mac Mini up. There is an Apple logo at the very beginning, but I did not get that. But other than that, this is what you can expect to see. Nothing major, it's really easy to set up, except for when it came to my keyboard, it could not recognize it. I'm sure it would recognize one of the Apple keyboards right out of the box. All I had to do is once the OS installed, I had to do a few tests with, with some of the keys on the keyboard. Here's me basically just really quickly testing out the keyboard to make sure it worked. If we look at the specs for the Mac Mini, I think the one for $699 at 2.6 gigahertz is the best bang for the buck. You're not gonna notice the difference between 2.6 gigahertz to 2.8 gigahertz, and they want you actually to pay an extra $300 more. If we look at the Mac Mini for $499, as you can tell, it has a 1.4 gigahertz processor. In my opinion, that's just really too underpowered to spend $500 on a system like that. Plus, you're only getting 4 gigabytes of RAM, where the other two systems you're getting 8 gigabytes of RAM. I want to let people know that with the more expensive Mac Mini, you are getting a Fusion Drive with the slight increase in clock speed, but I still think the middle priced Mac Mini is the best bang for the buck. Now, I actually got it with the 16 gigabytes of RAM, so that actually increased the price of the product. As most of you can tell, getting an iMac is actually gonna be more expensive. If you look at the specs, a lot of them only come with eight gig of RAM, so once again, you'd have to spend an extra 200 bucks. With the laptops, it was kind of the same way. They're only gonna come with eight gigs. You're gonna to wanna to upgrade it to probably 16. So you're gonna be well over $1,000 no matter what other Macintosh system you get. I wanna let people know I understand the iMac and a lot of the laptops from Apple have Thunderbolt 3. I understand that some of the iMacs have dedicated graphics cards. I want people to understand I got this Mac Mini as a secondary computer. I'm not getting rid of my PC. So that's why I didn't need really high specs. I'm recommending the system that I got, the Mac Mini at 2.6 gigahertz with 16 gig of RAM. For those that actually have a PC and are only going to use the Mac Mini just so that they can familiarize themselves with the Apple computer systems. If you just want to get a Mac as your secondary computer, I think the Mac Mini is the way to go. I want to say that the Mac Mini does not actually have a proprietary power brick like a lot of laptops. It just has a generic power cable, which I think is a plus for the Mac Mini. I want to say overall I'm happy with the product I purchased from Apple. When I say I'm happy with the product I purchased, I'm not saying that it's perfect. In fact, it's far from it. I'm simply saying that out of all the Apple products, I think it's the one that's going to suit my needs the best. As far as the price of $699 for 2.6 GHz CPU, 
I think that at that price point, it should have came with the 16 gigabytes of RAM. I also think it should have came with the Blu-ray player slash Blu-ray burner. The reason I say that is if you're a college student and you want to watch Netflix movies that you purchased, uh, that you had mailed to you that were Blu-ray or DVD, you should be able to watch them on your Mac Mini. You shouldn't have to get a Blu-ray player and hook it up to a TV in order to watch movies. I would also like to add, I've got a pretty big CD collection. I know most Mac users would probably just use iTunes as opposed to going out and buying CDs, but the option should be there to play a CD. Some people say you could get an external CD player or an external DVD burner, DVD player. If you do that, you're actually making that Mac Mini a lot bigger than it needs to be. You're gonna have more wires dangling. Why not just make the product about 50 to 60% bigger? On top of just adding a DVD burner or Blu-ray burner, they could also add a laptop GPU, like the laptop version of the GTX 1060. And I think they should also have the option of a quad core. I would also like to see the RAM upgradable. I got the 16 gigabytes of RAM because you can't just order eight gigs and then a month or two later upgrade to 16 gigs. It's soldered on the motherboard, so I want people to realize that right now. I also want to state on the new Mac Minis, it's really hard to get to the hard drive. I think Apple should make the hard drive real easy to get at so that people could upgrade it themselves. I myself probably would have not have opted for a quad core or a dedicated laptop GPU if it was offered in the Mac Mini. But that's only because this computer is going to be my secondary computer. My PC will be my main computer. But if somebody did want to use this Mac Mini as their main computer, I think it should come with a quad core or at least have the option. It should have the option to stick in one of the mobile GTX 1080s as well. Looking at the photo, you can tell the size of the Mac Mini and you can also see all the input and outputs. I should have some videos up soon that go over the Mac operating system where I point out the pros and cons and where I use some of the programs that come right out of the box with the Mac Mini. I don't think the Mac Mini will be the best choice for everyone. I hope that after watching this video, you can decide if the Mac Mini will suit your needs or not.